Today's tutorial, we're going to talk about parameter behaviors. We've talked about basic motion behaviors. So in your behaviors, we've talked about basic motion. We've talked about simulation. Today, we're going to talk about parameters. So what parameters is going to do is control one specific parameter at a time. And so you see all of these different types of parameters. And we're going to start by uh, applying animation to this first wheel, this cog one. So we want to change the rate at which cog one rotates or uh, moves. And on our rate, we're going to go to an inspector and we're going to change this right here, apply to, to tell it exactly which parameter we want. So what property are we going to affect? So in our transform, we're going to go to rotation. If we did an X or a Y, it would rotate around that axis, but we want it to uh, rotate around the Z axis so it looks like it's turning. And then we're going to change our rate to negative 50. So when we do that, this first wheel is going to turn. Let's take that back to the beginning. So we have our first wheel turning. Next, we're going to uh, use a different parameter on COG2. We could do rate on each one and tell it how fast we want to do. But what is good about the parameters is that we can link the, our parameters to a specific one. So when one moves, we can get the rest of them to move. So on COG2, in our rotation, right here you have our rotation layer and we're going to select this triangle at the end and add a parameter behavior that's called a link and in our link we need to tell it what is our source what are we basing everything off of and so in this case cog1 is going to be our source object and you can see that it has our rotation and our rotation so cog2 should rotate like cog1 does right now and you also see that they're going in the same direction. Well, really, COG1 and COG2 should be going in opposite directions. To tell it to change directions, we need to change the scale. So in our scale, if it's 1, it's going to move exactly the same at the same speed or the same rate in this case. If it's 0, then this is not going to move at all but we want it to move in the opposite direction so we're going to select negative one so now we have those two rotating negative one and to make it easier we're just going to copy and paste these links using our option key and then just dragging those links to each one now because these cogs are s smaller they need to actually turn faster so you can see that they're turning but they're not turning the right speed. So in COG3, in this, we're still going based on COG1, but our scale needs to be different. So I'm going to play it, and then I can sort of match up how fast it needs to be. So I'm really close there, and it somewhat matches up, but it's a little too slow. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. and 2.3 is actually a little too fast 2.4 so we're going to go down to 2.25 in between and we'll see if that matches up and it looks like it does so that is our speed we're going to use now on cog 4 it needs to turn in the opposite direction but the same speed cog 3 does so we're going to change this to negative 2.25 so now we should have all four cogs moving and they should look like all the teeth are matching up. So we have our gears moving. We want to actually create a system of cogs that's going to open up our curtain in this animation. So we're going to select the whole uh, gears group and uh, we want to move it up here to the top yellow stripe at the top of our curtain to make it look like that's the mechanism that's making our curtains open. 
So we're going to change this to make it smaller. We're going to change it to 28%. And it should fit just in there. Now to make uh, duplicate this so it goes all the way across, we're going to make clone layers. And you can go to Object, and you can hit Clone Layer. Or if you saw on there, our shortcut is K. So we could also select K in our um, keyboard to make our clones. So we're going to move each layer over, get it close to where we need it to be, but then we can zoom in and, and fix our actual how close we want it to be, our settings and all. So to do that, I'm going to go to this and I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to use the scroll button on the mouse. I'm going to take it all the way to the end and find my first clone layer. See how the teeth just don't quite match up. And I'm going to move it right there. So when it's moving, it looks like they're matching up. Then I can go to each of my other layers and do the same thing. Now sometimes, it depends on your settings, you might have snap to object on. So you might need to go to view and then snap and turn that off so you can actually see uh, it not jumping around when you're trying to just barely move it. So now all of my gears should be moving like so. We're going to close that part up for just a second. Now if I hit Shift Z, I go back to my full screen for my canvas. So I have my gears. Now I need to tell my curtains to move. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect my left side of the curtain to the gear, to cog one. But this time I'm not going to use a rotation, I'm going to use position because my curtain needs to move in only the X direction, left or right. So I'm going to add that parameter behavior link, just like we did before, and cog1 is going to be my source. Here, you see it open because cog1 is not in the same place it started. We want it to be on rotation instead, so property transform, then rotation, and then what direction we were doing. So we need to change the compatible parameter. So transform, rotation, and Z. And now we're going to move our timeline back and you'll see that the left side opens. So we have our left side opening but now we need our right side to open. And again we need to add our link. So in position X, add my behavior to link. And just to not have to worry about so much of it, I'm going to take my red left, because it's the same thing that I'm changing and moving, except I want it to move in the opposite direction, so it's a negative one. So now my curtains open like so. The next thing I need to do is tell my curtains when to stop. I don't want them to open so fast, and I kind of want them to stop at some point. So actually, let's go back to red left, and we're going to change our link there. And we're going to make it slower, so it needs to be between 0 and 1. So let's go to 0 0.5. So now our curtains open slower. And let's stop about 5 seconds or so. And we're going to tell it to stop at this point. Well, remember, everything is based on cog 1. So at this point on cog1, we want to add another behavior. So holding the, um, I'm sorry, holding the control button down, click on rotation, and we're going to add another behavior, not rate, but stop, because we want our parameter to stop at that point. So if cog1 stops, everything stops, because everything's based on it. So now my curtains open, and then they stop. So now let's uh, play a little bit with the movie screen. 
in the back and to do that we're going to adjust our light. So let's turn our light layer on which is at the top and light only affects a 3D layer so we're going to make stage a 3D group. So if you right click on your mouse on stage layer change it to a 3D group and you can see now that there's a little spotlight here so if I change that back to a 2D you don't see the spotlight but if it's 3D you do. The last thing we're going to affect is our movie screen. So let's open up our curtain so we can see the movie screen. Let's just take it to the stop where it's not going to move. And we're going to add a little bit of a flicker to our movie screen like they had in olden days. And to do this, we're going to actually change our opacity. Opacity, opacity, whichever one you want to call it. So we're going to hold the control button down, select opacity, and this time we're going to use our wriggle. Wriggle is sort of like a randomize, but it does it in a smaller range. So we're going to change our amount to 50%. That was really close. And we're going to change our apply mode to subtract because we want uh, it to flicker just a little bit, but we want our opacity to go in and out. And so you can see that it's affecting it that way. If I go to my behaviors while this is playing and I look at my opacity, you can see that it's just moving just slightly up and down so it's applying that wriggle effect to my opacity. Another thing that I can add or change is my frequency, how fast I make it or how much noise there is there. And so I can adjust those settings to my liking as well. Make it faster, I can make it slower. So that is how you apply parameter behaviors to a project. And our next project, this is the end of lesson three for behaviors, animation with behaviors. Next, when we, our next lesson, we're going to talk about keyframing. So I'll see you next time.